All right, and welcome back to the Steelers and Hoboken podcast. We're official now. We're in the books. The first one's out of the way, and all the pressure is off. <laughs> I'm your host, Ray Powers. Some people call me a lunatic, although I'm not going to be in lunatic mode for another month. I'll be honest, it's August. It's a Friday morning. It's 5 a.m., and I'm a suburban dad. I'm just hanging out with a cup of tea because I was too lazy to make a pot of coffee. And I wanted to get this out of the way so I wasn't able to go to 7-Eleven or make a Dunkin' run. So I'm just sitting here with a cup of tea in my Steeler jammies. And um, I really am wearing Steeler. They're Steeler shorts, actually. But um, they're comfortable as all hell. Yeah, See, I'm in Steeler mode all year. The sign's out front. You know, Steeler country. All my, uh, all my neighbors who are Giant fans are all, they're pissed already. <laughs> oh, he's back at it again. Well, yeah. That happens all year. I have news for you. Steeler fans are fans all year long. And, you know, speaking of those fans who are so passionate, you know, I, I, I poke fun at them all the time, but I love them. We need those. Those are the true lunatics out there. The people I'm talking about are the ones who completely lost their mind over the Steelers losing the Hall of Fame game last week. Yeah, uh, it happened, guys. I'm sorry. It did. It was it was a it was a bad day for you guys. Um, Vikings 14, Steelers 3 at the end of the Hall of Fame game. And when I tell you these guys are upset, I have you you have these friends too. They're you know past the fringe, and they're you know they're they are certifiable lunatics. But they were inconsolable when uh, the Steelers lost this game. You know it's a practice game. But it was the Hall of Fame weekend. Bettis and all the legends were there. And how do you lose in front of them? It's a disgrace. It, uh, you, you know what? You're right. I, I can't argue with them. It's, it's, it's just more fun to watch. But, um, you know, Landry Jones was terrible in this game. And he, he oh, my God, how was he an NFL quarterback? Well, I don't, I don't know why he's an NFL quarterback. But, you know, everyone's ready to dump him. Let's, let's get rid of him because he's not good. Well, I don't know. You know, the Steelers have been in business for what? This is their 83rd, 84th year? I, I don't know. Um, they might know more than I do. This is just a hunch from, from me, but they might know a little more about football than I do. On the inside, if they're holding on to Landry Jones, that must be a reason. I'm sure they realize he won't be the next Dan Marino, but you know what? They're holding on to him. So, you know, when he's on the field, I'll root for him. You know, I'll be honest. Um, Here's my gripe, all right? And it has nothing to do with um, Landry Jones did play last week. And that's why, you know, it's like, see, you give him a chance to play and he's terrible. That's, you know, what the, the, the crazy fans are saying. And, you know, yeah, he didn't show much last week. But, again, you're not going to, in my eyes anyway, again, I know less than the coaches do, but, you know, if you're, if you're established with the team and you're not some walk-on, you know, Landry Jones and Greg Kowski are in the same boat as far as they were there last year. They're coming back this year. You know, you, you expect them to make the team. But last year, oh, and correct me if I'm wrong on this, did Ben Roethlisberger not take every snap last year? Like, I mean, maybe, you know, somebody was in wildcat formation or a different formation, single wing formation, and maybe the running back took a snap or, a, you know, a split end took a snap. But I'm talking about as far as quarterbacks go, under you know, under center. I think Ben Roethlisberger took every single snap last year, which means that the Steelers operated without a second string quarterback, any or you know anything functional that resembles a second string quarterback. Now, okay, maybe this is me being naive here, but how do you expect your backups to become competent if you never use them? I mean, you know. Practice on Wednesday does not make you, you know, complete as a player. It doesn't make you game ready, I don't think. You know, I mean, weren't the Steelers up by, you know, more than 14 points in the fourth quarter by, you know, by any point last season? And I know they love to just give us heart attacks. So I, I don't have the, you know, patience to go back and look to see every box score. But, you know, once you take your foot off the gas, so to speak, I mean, your, your starting quarterback should be out of there. You make the quarterback that the quarter, you know, your court, you make the point that the quarterback is worth, you know, nine figures in, you know, a gazillion dollars. Shouldn't he be off the field when he doesn't need to be in there? I mean, you know, 
I don't know. Maybe it's just me. But Gretkowski supposedly, you know, is injured and he's suffering from arm fatigue, which seems ironic considering he didn't play last year. Maybe it's arm rust. I mean, but my problem with Tomlin is that he just doesn't use certain guys. And in this case, anybody on the sideline, you know, with a, a, with a quarterback's number. And I just don't get it. I mean, I don't understand. He did it with, with uh, Charlie Batch, too. Would not go to Charlie Batch. He would look for, you know, a fan in the stands, you know, munching on a hot dog before he went to Charlie Batch. And I just didn't understand it. It happened in 2011. A very pivotal game against the 49ers at, toward the end of the season. James Harrison got suspended that bogus suspension where the lights went out in in San Francisco the first time and Harrison tweeted LOL and it was a big farce and it was a perfect tweet that LOL just summed it up perfectly. But that game, Ben Roethlisberger was so beat up, he literally could not drop back into, you know, into coverage and he couldn't drop back to, to complete a pass. And he was a sitting duck every time. And I, I kept looking at the sideline. I, you know, the camera would go to Tomlin. And it's like, well, when are you going to pull this guy out? When he's dead? Are you going to still prop him up when he's dead and, you know, expect him to, to, you know, put the ball in play? When are you going to take this guy out? Charlie Batch is sitting on the sideline perfectly healthy, or at least he appeared to be perfectly healthy. And instead, Ben Roethlisberger is, you know, dragging body parts and, you know, just, just having to huddle up because four guys are, you know, closing in on him to kill him. And it just, I figured, well, if they don't fire Mike Tomlin after this game, they, they will never fire him, and he will be the next Chuck Knoll for the next however many years he wants to be there. Because it just, to me, it was unbelievable to watch. Um, and I guess it's, okay, fine. Your starting quarterback is Ben Roethlisberger. Everybody gets that. But he can come out once in a while. And maybe it's the, I don't know. And I figured with Bruce Arians there, Uncle Bruce, you know, Sure, then, you know, Ben Roethlisberger called everything and had his way, and I, I knew why he didn't want to see Bruce Arians go, you know. That was his buddy who let him do whatever he wanted. But um, a starting quarterback will never come out of the game unless you yank them out of the game. That much seems apparent to me. Again, maybe I'm just being naive, but that seems to be the case. But, again, how do you expect your backups to become decent or even usable if you never use them? You know, fourth quarter late in the game, you're up by a lot, you know, or you're getting destroyed, you know, and you're four touchdowns behind with two minutes to go. Well, there's no reason for your starting quarterback to be out there anymore. Take him out. I mean, is that okay? <laughs> I mean, maybe I'm just, maybe I am the lunatic and I don't know what's going on, but, you know, Gradkowski, no activity last year. Landry Jones, no activity last year. And of course, my friends, are, no, you can't put Landry Jones in there because he's terrible. Well, they shouldn't be on the team. Oh, I just proved your point, didn't I? <laughs> I know I'm writing in circles. It's preseason. We're just talking about football. All right? If we had two bar stools and you were here with me, this is what it would sound like. So, you know, let's, you know, go easy. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, last week was, was a horrible time for my friends. You know, Vikings 14, Steelers 3. I actually heard some people say, I or at least one person said this, in writing on Facebook, I'm sure I could find it, the Vikings got their revenge for Super Bowl Nine. <laughs> I had nothing to add to it. I was, uh, well, you're right, I guess. You're, you're right. If you're the Vikings, that makes things a little better. You know, the four Super Bowl losses, well, we beat the Steelers in preseason. Now go find your other three opponents that destroyed you in the Super Bowl from 40 years ago, and you'll be, you'll be the cat's pajamas, man. You'll be set. <laughs> But in some serious news, um, Sean Sweezum, done for the year. His ACL wrecked it. I was heartbroken, I'll be honest. As a Steeler fan, as a former, I'm going to say place kicker, I, I actually kicked in high school, not even in college. But, you know, I know the mechanics of kicking, and um, you don't expect to tear an ACL in a preseason game. And, uh, I mean, I, I love Sean Sweezum. Who doesn't? And it was just, you know, heartbreaking to see him go down. And he's done for the year, obviously. I mean, 
I've never wrecked an ACL. I've injured my MCL, you know, the inside soft tissue of the knee, on the inside of the knee. And that hurts like hell. And that took 10 weeks to heal. Of course, I was stubborn and I refused to stop working out. And I wouldn't stay off it and, you know, use crutches. And I was too proud. But that took a long time to heal. And that was, you know, child's play. That was a picnic compared to an ACL. You know, the, the bones and everything else and whatever else is the, the sinew and the, the muscles on the inside, the outside of the knee, excuse me. Um, that, was, that was bad. That, you know, a wrecked ACL, you're done for the year. Almost every time. Injured reserve. So the Steelers had to go out and get a new kicker. And I believe um, it, Garrett Hartley came from the Saints, if I'm not mistaken. And again, it's like, how could you, uh, didn't you do any research? No, I just looked on the website and saw on the roster it was Garrett Hartley. <laughs> I, try, I don't watch ESPN. ESPN is a joke. It has nothing to do with sports. I check Steelers.com for anything I want that's, that I'm going to use because I figure if the Steelers are going to commit to it, then I'll commit to it. I'm not using ESPN for any reliable sports news because they're about as, you know, they're about as related to sports or as relevant to sports as Papa John's is to being Italian food. <laughs> so, yeah, I don't, I don't put any stock in ESPN or the NFL Network for that matter because look what they hire. I mean, you know, they take on guys like Warren Sapp. I mean, uh, you know, enough said, okay? But, um, yeah, so losing Sean Sweeson was, was, was awful. I was pretty wrecked over that. And I think everybody was. So, what do I have to do? I've got to give away a trivia prize from last week. It was a real tough one. It was the uh, soundbite at the beginning of the show. And um, it was the guy who made a remark about quarterbacks. And he said they should wear dresses. I think we knew who that was. That was Jack Lambert. The guy who was a fairly famous stealer. <laughs> uh, Jason from Cedar Knowles. He got the answer. He's um, he's our winner, so he's going to get a Steelers and Hoboken T-shirt when they're ready and the season's underway. Come to Hoboken, you know, come get the shirt, or as I promised you, I'll mail it to you. Here's a trivia question. This is going to be a real tough one too. If you're a Steeler fan and you've been so for more than a week, I think you'll get this one. We're going to go easy in the beginning because it's preseason. All right, nobody wants to think on a Friday this early in the morning. By the time you get this, it'll be 7 a.m. But it's five right now, so. Okay, here's the trivia question for week two of the preseason, or week one, or however you look at it. Who played the most games as a Pittsburgh Steeler? Yeah, see, that's a, that's a real killer right there. Who played more games as a Pittsburgh Steeler than anyone else in Steeler history? Okay. Email me, lunatic at steelersandhoboken.com. You'll win a Steelers and Hoboken t-shirt, the 2015 edition. All right, so you know what? I'm getting email. This, that's a good sign. People are into football now. I have an email from Chris in Hoboken. And he's not going to have far to go to Texas, Arizona when it comes time to watch the games. By the way, the preseason games, um, not really that big of a deal in Hoboken right now. It's been proven year and again. No, they're not going out of their way to show the games, especially because on the NFL Network, a lot of times the games aren't shown live real time unless you're in western pennsylvania you really can't watch all four preseason games real time and i've had fans go just completely nuts on me how can you not get the games real time well if nfl network's not you know overly um enthused about it you know what they do is a lot of times they'll just well, every time they'll tape delay them and you'll get to see them a day later two days later a couple days later you know they air them once or twice and then then they're gone um, we've done things with Slingbox in the past. We've done things with, you know, these European sites that were dubious at best. And we tried to placate, you know, seven or eight fans that might show up, maybe half of that, for preseason games because it's the summer and people are out doing summer stuff. And it's a real tough sell to try to get, you know, people together for preseason games as, you know, as a, a collection. It, it's amazing that, you know, you can't draw five to six to seven people for a preseason game. And then when the regular season starts, you know, the doors are, there's a waiting list outside to get into Texas, Arizona. There's a line down the block. So it just goes to show you that, you know, those games, you know, games one through 16 on the regular season, 
they obviously mean more than these practice games. And that's all I was trying to make as a point last week. <laughs> so, um, oh, I, in my email from Chris and Hoboken. I'm sitting here just leaving Chris on the doorstep here. Come on in, Chris. I'm sorry. I, sorry about that. Chris writes, Hi, Ray slash lunatic. Congrats on the podcast. It's about time. Ha ha. It certainly is. Uh, you contradicted yourself last week. Oh, that was a shock. <laughs> You said that you were going to go raw on this show, and I like that. It's refreshing. But you also said that you would get more polished as the year went on. Which is it going to be? I don't think you can have it both ways with a smiley face. Now, he's a smart ass like me. Um, well, I don't know, Chris. I guess I, you know, I am a hypocrite, and I guess I did um, contradict myself. But <laughs> I'll keep it as raw as I can. But, you know, as the season goes on, I'll at least try to have my thoughts organized. I guess that's what I meant, you know. I'll give it to you real time. I won't go back and, you know, re-record, re-record. Oh, that wasn't perfect. There was too much breath in that in that phrase or whatever. That's all I meant. I meant I'll talk to you like like a sports fan talking to another sports fan. That's all I meant. You know, don't read too much into it. It's a podcast. It's a specific podcast for Steelers and Hoboken. And, of course, we're sharing it with the world. And we want the world to be part of Steelers and Hoboken. So... But, you know, again, in, in the grand scheme of things, this isn't the State of the Union address. It's just a podcast. There are many like it. And, um, you know, we're just passionate fans talking about what we love. Steeler football. So, I don't know. I'll find a middle ground, Chris. And um, I, I have, I'm putting a smiley face there as I say that. You can't see me smiling. So, I've had no coffee yet, so there's no reason to smile. <laughs> and no one's bringing me a, a cup of coffee at 524 in the morning. So, oh, well, what are you going to do? So, what do we have left to talk about? We have a game coming up tonight. It's Friday. Steelers are going to play the Jaguars in Jacksonville. And that's big news for our friends who uh, live and die by these preseason games. And I feel really bad, you know, telling these guys that, guys and girls, that I hope the Steelers, at least on the scoreboard, lose these games. I hope it says Jacksonville, again, maybe Jacksonville 14, Steelers 3. How could you say that and be a Steeler fan? Well, these games don't matter. It's just practice. It's like six-year-old T-ball. Everyone wins. <laughs> I mean, Sweezen didn't win last week. It was it was a it was a sad day when Sweezen went down. But you know what I mean. I mean, run the five or six stock plays. Let's just find some good players, okay? That's all that really matters in this game. But you know, if it makes you feel any better, no, I'm I'm not I'm not gonna seed on this. I'm just not I'm not budging. I want zero and five. I do. I want 0 5, and then I want a regular season of 13 and 3, 12 and 4. I mean, even 11 and 5 is okay if, if that's enough to win the division. But, you know, then I guess you're on the road for the entire, you know, run of the playoffs. But I guess, you know, maybe that's not a bad thing either because the Steelers did win a Super Bowl after having to be on the road for the entire 2005 playoffs. And let's face it, the Steelers do not have the best track record with, you know, big home games you know how many AFC title games did they lose at home over the years you know how many big big games you know big playoff games look at last year I mean they they really needed to win that game last year that was the Ravens that was their first time back into the playoffs after a couple of years and maybe it's better to be on the road I don't know do I do I dare say 10 and 6 is okay I don't know to me it's just get to the playoffs that's the main thing you don't want to go 16 or no Again, you know, we talked about it last week. The Patriots went 16-0, and they lost the Super Bowl. So nobody remembers that they went 16-0, unless it's just, you know, to dig it in a little bit more and say, you guys were perfect, but you weren't perfect. So you're not the Dolphins, and you never will be. The Dolphins didn't have to cheat. You did. Now, speaking of cheating, did you see this week Tom Brady went to court in New York I guess to, you know, make a final appeal of, you know, fighting the suspension and getting to play. It's comical. It really is. I wonder if he's gotten to the point now where he's actually psyched himself up so much where he actually now believes his own lies. You know, you know, when you do that, when you have to like, um, you know, you got to get yourself so into your own lie that you have to just kind of you know, shake everything else out and just tunnel vision and you've got to just concentrate on that lie and, and embody that lie and just, you know, just immerse yourself in that role. 
and I have to just, you know, I've got to make myself believe this so I can pull it off and be, you know, convincing. That's what I'm, well, I'm convinced that's what the Patriots have done since Belichick got there. But, you know, now Brady fighting for his, you know, regular season, his first four games, <laughs> I think it's comical. You know, I saw the, the courtroom sketches and stuff, and what's with that? He looked like Quasimodo in those pictures. It must have been a, a Patriot hater who uh, who sketched him up there because he looked pretty he looked pretty rough. And maybe you know maybe Giselle's not rubbing the cucumber paste on his face or whatever. I don't know. It's it's pretty funny. The whole thing just cracks me up. You know, the Patriots so being so indignant over this four game suspension because it's like, well, you know we're not held to that standard that the NFL is. You know, we're supposed to be the golden boys and uh, the commission is supposed to look the other way. Well, he's not this time and I'm no fan of Roger Goodell. It's pretty safe to say that I never will be no matter what he does. But, um, you know, I, I would pat him on the back for this. I'd buy him a beer and say, you know, yeah, you make $80 million a year. I'll, I'll buy the beer. It's okay. <laughs> but, um, you know, if when you to be a Patriot fan, how do you, how do you do that? How can you actually bring yourself to to back these guys? To actually psych yourself up into that same lie and say, yeah, we're getting a raw deal here. As if you don't know what's going on. It's it's pretty pathetic, you know? And speaking of pathetic, you know, you want to hear pathetic? <laughs> of course you do. That's why you're here, right? Uh, look at this, um, I don't even know this this guy's name. The guy who um, who sucker punched Geno Smith of the Jets. Um, apparently, he's just some thug piece of garbage, so I'm not even going to look up his name. But, you know, apparently he had a record before this, and he was, as a 19-year-old, he, like, um, sucker punched some cop, some off-duty cop, and had to be subdued with pepper spray and this and that. And, you know, I to me, it's it's... It's the Jets news. It's not Steelers news, but it just came up. And, you know, obviously there's not a whole lot going on with Steeler camp right now. There is, but, you know, my attention span is like a five-year-old, you know, to go into it and immerse myself with, you know, players that aren't going to be there in two weeks. Um, that's a piss poor attitude, isn't it? <laughs> For a Steeler podcast. But um, just to finish this story, um, apparently it was it was like over some dispute over like $600 and some some football charity camp or something going on. I don't know. Long story short, you know, if you sucker punch your starting quarterback, there are probably going to be some serious repercussions, and now he's gone. But um, my biggest problem is sucker punching somebody. I mean, at least man up if you want to punch somebody. Spin them around and say, hey, you want to go? Let's go outside. But to sucker punch somebody, that's the most cowardly thing you could possibly do. Okay. I mean, there is no, to me, if, if you go to jail for, you know, for sucker punching somebody on an assault charge, they should let people know in, you know, in population. By the way, this guy here, not only did he get into an altercation, not only did he break this guy's jaw, but the guy wasn't even ready. He sucker punched him. Take care of business. I mean, but the guy lost his job and, he, you know, here's, here's the, uh, the ironic part. Who picks him up? But Buffalo, Rex Ryan as the head coach, you know, are you shocked that Rex Ryan is is digging through garbage yet again? Unreal. This is the same guy that coached Michael Vick, a dog killer. So I guess you know what? Garbage finds garbage. So, you know, good luck up in up in Buffalo, you idiots. I I you know, I hate you all. I can say that. I do, I hate you all. Rex Ryan, bottom of the barrel coach, buffoon absolute just joke of a coach and um i'm so so glad that you know he came from raven stock and obviously you know scum rises to the top as well as cream so you know you were a joke with the jets you made a mockery of your of your coaching career there and um i'm sure you're going to do the same thing in, in buffalo you're not going to win anything in buffalo you're a joke you made them a bigger joke and um, now you, you're surrounding yourself with, with thugs who like to sucker punch people. So good luck with that. Why don't you, why don't you get that guy tattooed on your other arm? You know, you can get um, a tattoo of your wife wearing that guy's jersey. That'll be cool. <laughs> you're a real cutting edge, man. I'm telling you. What a, what a joke. I am so glad the Steelers have more class 
than to um, to indulge in such such idiocy. You know, we, we if the Steeler, you know, if Steelers make a mistake, if Steeler players make a mistake, you know, it's corrected right away. If it's severe, that guy has shown the door. And you know, when someone has the um, the I can't think. My God, I really do need a cup of coffee. You know, if it's a situation where it can be rectified, you know, with discipline, the Steelers are pretty swift with dealing out discipline. They did it with uh, with with Le'Veon Bell. And, you know, it's so much better to be a Steeler fan, you know, on the inside looking out than to be a fan of these other teams and just you shake your head going, oh, my God, I got to root for these guys and look what they're doing here. Oh, I'm so tied to these team colors, but you know, being a Buffalo fan is is a pretty rough gig. I mean, your most famous player of all time is not even known for football primarily. <laughs> Ask some 23 year old kid, you know, who's OJ Simpson? <laughs> what are they going to tell you? <laughs> oh man, I'm I'm not laughing at uh, at the crime he committed or allegedly committed, but um, man, it's just the whole situation of. Wow. You know, as Steeler fans, we just don't know how good we have it. You know, not it's not just the championships I'm talking about. I'm not talking about the championships at all, actually, because, you know, people tend to forget the Steelers were atrocious for those first 40 years. They never won anything. And, um, you know, before that, all you had was your integrity. You were a hard-hitting physical team that, um, that just beat up other teams and you know you'd lose on the scoreboard or what did they say they used to say that you know you didn't beat the Steelers or you you beat the Steelers but you lost your next game because you were beat up so bad and that was the old guard of the Steelers and of course the Steel Curtain you know they would um, they'd beat you up on the scoreboard and you limped off the field so that was the the culmination of the entire you know that became that was the Steelers arriving finally in, in 1974 or you know when Chuck Knoll arrived building up to that point of winning Super Bowl nine, But, um, yeah, I mean, when I say the Steelers fans have it good, I mean, look at the organization. That's what I'm talking about. The Rooney family, you know, being the owners for all 80-plus years and just having a standard that other teams simply don't. I mean, the Cowboys, my God, you know, Jerry Jones, you know, a bigger joke than, than Rex Ryan. He's on the field, and I mean, you know, the guy looks like he wants to suit up at any time. He's like, no, get off the field. I'll show you how it's done. I'd love to see that, <laughs> him running out in the field with pads on. Uh, but, you know, these these guys, they just they look at it just from a business standpoint. There's no pride. There's no integrity. And, you know, they'll just they'll sign anybody. They'll, they'll, they'll pardon a guy off a death row, take him out of the electric chair. He has clemency, sign him up. And, you know, as a Steeler fan, you've got to feel that kind of pride. I really, I really would. I, I would, you know, without the six championships, you know, I would still be proud to be a Steeler fan because look at, look at what they bring to the table. They're the standard in which every other team is measured. And that's, um, that's saying something. It really is. And today, especially in today's day and age, you know, where everything is about the bottom line and it's all about winning and everything else. And it's, you know... It's nice to see that, um, you know, some, some things are more important than winning. And, um, you know, with the Roonies, it's, that's just been the way they've done it. That's their business model. And that's just, that's, it's, to me, it transcends all the championships. I'm not one of these guys that believes, oh, you know, this guy can help us. So who cares what he did? I care what he did. You know, I, it, maybe it's just me getting older. I don't know. But I think I've always felt that way. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it's revisionist history. But, um, hey, you know what? It's August. It's not even 6 a.m. yet. And we're talking preseason football. But do check out Steelers and Hoboken on Facebook. It's facebook.com slash Steelers and Hoboken Club. Like us, become a fan, and you'll get all the perks. Anything on your mind? Email me, lunatic at steelersandhoboken.com. Guys, that's all I have for now. Check out the game this weekend and um, enjoy the weekend. It's still August, so go out and do some summer stuff. I'll talk to you next week.